Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at WinElect, and today we're going to be looking at app services for containers. Today we're going to be looking at one of my favorite things, and that is containers, and particularly web apps for containers on Azure App Services. Now, a web app for containers supports both Linux and Windows containers, and we're going to dive into exactly what a container is in just a moment to give you a brief introduction to this, and we're going to do a more complete series on containers later on on Tech on Fire. But for now, we can say that an application that can run on Linux or Windows inside of a Docker container can run on app services using web apps for containers. Apps can be written in any language. So that could be Node.js, PHP, Ruby, ASP.NET. It can be any language that can run a web server. So if you had something, say, like a shell script that was served up through something like LightHTTPD on Linux, you could put that into a container and then put that onto Azure App Services. So this opens up a lot of possibilities for running applications on app services that you wouldn't be able to do with just one of the default stacks that are available on app services. You can also deploy these from multiple sources. That could be Docker Hub, which is a public repository for most base Docker images, or you can have private repositories and Docker Hubs. You can also use Azure Container Registry, which is an Azure provided service for containers, or you can use a private container registry that isn't either Azure Container Registry or Docker Hub, something like Artifactory or something like that. So any of these are supported by app services. And it also will handle the OS patching and load balancing for you. So if you've ever deployed an application in a container, one thing that you have to specify whenever you deploy that is how you're going to handle the scaling of that application and the load balancing. What containers and web apps is going to do is behave much like it would if it was running just a standard web app and it's going to load balance that application in much the same way through instances of that application, or you can use things like deployment slots and so on. All of those are supported using containers on app services. And the OS is also patched on app services as well, so you don't have to worry about that as well. I want to use virtual machines as a point of comparison for containers because it'll help show the similarities from virtual machines and containers and the differences to give you a context of what containers are. This is not really relevant for app services, but it is good for understanding uh, what containers are. Containers and virtual machines are similar in, in the respect that they have at their base a operating system. Now for virtual machines, that's a host operating system that is used to run the next layer, which is a hypervisor, which in the or in containers case, a container engine. So if I'm running Windows a, on virtual machines, I have my host operating system as Windows. My hypervisor would be something like VirtualBox or Hyper-V or VMware. Now on an operating system, that is running a container engine, that container engine would most likely be Docker. And there are some other uh, additional features you can put on top of the Docker engine that can do orchestration like Kubernetes. But fundamentally speaking, that container engine is what is responsible for what the hypervisor does in the context of virtual machines. And that is the creation of containers, the removal of containers, memory management, the networking, the storage, all of those things that go into making a virtual machine run and a container run are very similar between a container engine and a hypervisor in the context of virtual machines. Now, the next layer is where containers and virtual machines diverge. And in the context of virtual machines, we abstract hardware and we expose virtual hardware to a guest operating system to run on top of. With containers, however, you don't expose virtual hardware, you expose what is more or less a virtual kernel. So it is a kernel level abstraction versus a hardware level abstraction in the context of containers. However, once you get past that hardware abstraction and that guest operating system in virtual machines, or you get past that operating system level abstraction in containers, you can then have the same libraries and then the same apps running on a virtual machine like you would inside of a container as you would on a virtual machine. The trade-off for using containers uh, is that with a container, you have to be able to run the same 
operating system in the container as you do for the operating system that is running the container engine. So essentially you don't have the option of running Windows containers on a Linux operating system, or you don't have the option of running um, Linux containers on a Windows operating system. However, with virtual machines, because you're doing hardware level abstraction and the guest OS can be any OS such as BSD, Linux, Windows, different version of Windows, it can run any operating system. So you reduce the overhead by essentially collapsing the uh, operating system down to what it would be, uh, uh, the operating system to, to being the same one as the one running the containers. Now, container workflow looks something like this, where we can start with a local dev environment and we have container registries and we have container environments for running containers. Now, a local dev environment is where we build our containers. So we take a Docker file, which is essentially a script that tells Docker how to build out a Docker image. And we type in a command that says Docker build, and that converts the Docker file and all the components into a Docker image that is a local image on my local dev box. Next, I run docker push, which will take the image and push it to a container registry. And once it's up on the container registry, I'm actually ready to use that uh, container image in some environment. Now, if I was running this in Kubernetes, I would run a command to put it on Kubernetes. If I was running this in Docker, I would use a command to run it on Docker. Or if I'm using app services, I can use a different command to actually deploy it to app services, or I can use the Azure portal. But in any case, it's going to use some command that's going to take that image and move it from the container registry down into the container environment. And that container image will then be converted into a container and will be running on that environment. Now, for my demo for this video, I'm going to be doing a soup to nuts demo where I'm going to build an image and then push it to Docker Hub, then deploy it to Azure App Services. Now, I'm here in the command prompt on the, my Windows terminal, but I want to show you the Docker file that I'm going to be using for this demo. Now, this is straight off of GitHub for the PHP uh, Docker official image. I'm going to rebuild it and then push it to my own repo to show you how that works. And it's basically using a base image that has PHP 7 installed and Apache and then it's configuring that image specifically for WordPress and all the idiosyncrasies that go into making a WordPress instance inside of a Docker container. So once I have that Docker file written, I then can call Docker build. And Docker build is the command that will take a Docker file and turn it into an image. So I'm going to call Docker build and do a dash T. And then I'm going to say, Blaze slash WP demo, and that's tagging them, that's telling it which repository it's going to go into. So it's going to go into my uh, repository on Docker Hub at WP demo. And then I'm going to say dash dash no dash cache so that it will not use cache layers in the build process so that you can see everything flowing over the screen. And then we'll use the dot to tell it to use the Docker file in this current folder. And this process will take about a minute. So let's let this run and wait for it to finish. Now that the build is done, we can then push this Docker Hub. I've already connected my instance of Docker running on a VM to Docker Hub using Docker login. But once I have the image built, I can do Docker push, and then I can specify the the image that I just built using blaze slash WP demo. And that will actually push up my local copy of this image to Docker Hub uh, by way of just a simple upload. Now that that push is done, I can then use this image to actually deploy something to Azure App Services. So let's go back to the Azure portal and let's go um, push, the, let's go create an app service and then we will put this image on Azure App Services as a container. I'm here in the Azure portal now and I have already set up a resource group with an instance of MariaDB, which is the database that is used by WordPress. Now, MariaDB itself is a drop-in replacement for MySQL, so I could use the Azure database for MySQL as well, but I've opted to use the MariaDB as a service here. And in that database, I configured a database called WordPress, which I'm going to be using to connect my Azure App Service to. And so with all that configured, I have my database already prepped and ready to go. And then once I connect my WordPress instance to it, it'll populate that database 
with tables and other uh, content in those tables. So with that, let's go into the portal and actually create an app service that is for containers. So if I type in containers up here, I'm going to get web app for containers. Now you can use the standard wizard to create these in uh, Azure, but this particular one, I'm going to pre-populate some of the fields I need for this particular uh, intent that I'm using, which is a Docker image. So I'm going to select a name for it. I'm going to call it blaze WP and that's going to be Azure websites.net. So that'd be the URL for my WordPress site. And it's already, uh, pre-populated, published to a Docker container and selected the operating system for Linux because I'm using a Linux-based container. Now, I could use Windows containers on this as well, but I'm going to be using Linux for this demo. And I'm going to select the East US region because that's the same region as my database. So I want that to be geographically close. Now, down here, I'm going to create a new app service plan. I'm going to call it Blaze WP app service plan. And I'm going to change the size of it to a basic B1. Notice there isn't a standard tier available in containers. You have the basic B1 and the production uh, for the P2, the P1, P2, and P3. There's no standard tier here, so you need to take that in consider consideration when you're deploying these uh, on to app services. And that's because this is running on Linux, and you only have a dev test a, a tiers and then the the premium tiers for Linux, but a but a B1 should suffice for this demo, and that's the one I'm going to use. So once I have that ready to go, I'm going to click Next to go on to the next tab. And I have several options here that I can use. I, I can use a single container or use Docker Compose. Now, Docker Compose allows me to create multi-container apps, but I'm actually going to be using one container. But I want to use Docker Compose because it gives me the ability to more finely tune the container for my liking. Uh, I can do a lot more with Docker Compose than I can in the wizard here because I can give it a configuration file. And I can choose an image source. One of the quick starts was one of the defaults that I can choose from the the list that are just one of the pre-populated um, examples that I have inside of this. Or I can choose one of three different types of registries. I can choose Azure Container Registry, which is a Azure provided service. And it's a, a container registry as a service on Azure that is native to the Azure environment. I can also use Docker Hub, which is the kind of de facto standard for most base images. And I can also use it for private images or public images, or I can use a private reef repo like Artifactory for this as well. And the access type for my image is public. I just built a WordPress image and pushed it to Docker Hub and put it in a, in a public repo there, not a private repo. Now here's where I select my actual configuration file right here. Now the configuration file is a YAML file, which is the format I use to define the actual image and the parameters that I'm going to be using. And I've built this down here inside of this particular uh, YAML file here. And what I've done is I've pre-populated it with all the parameters I need to connect my instance of WordPress to that database. I provided it with a host name, a user password, the name of the database that we saw already, and a table prefix WP underscore. And this special flag tells the uh, WordPress instance to use SSL to connect to that database so it's secured. And with that in mind, I can take this file, I'm going to get its it's folder. I'm going to open it in Explorer, and I'm going to grab that you that uh, path there, and then I'm going to go down here to this and browse for that file. It's actually already there, so I can select Docker Compose YAML, and it's going to put it into this um, this little configuration box here. I can't edit edit it here, but I can with have actually deployed it into the uh, environment. I can actually edit the file without actually having to upload it again in a text box in the Azure portal. The next is monitoring. We're not going to use App Insights, so I'm going to leave that off for now. I don't need tagging. It's going to validate these uh, settings. And once I have those settings good to go, I can click Create and then let this run, and we'll come back whenever this finishes. Now that my deployment's done, I can go to the resource, and this will take me straight to the app service, to the overview tab. Now, because I pre-configured everything inside of the Docker Compose file, I should be able to launch this URL here, and it pull up the website. Now, sometimes on the first load, this can take a minute to pull up because it's got to 
connect to the database. It's got to pull the image. It's got to do a lot of things under the hood. And once that's done, you should see a landing page for your site, whatever it might be. In my case, WordPress, and it's the site configuration pane here. And because I'm seeing this, I know that it's successfully connected to the database because the parameters were put into the um, configuration file for WordPress because I populated those into that compose file and then the, the build script built that configuration file for WordPress and then it connected the database, it, con it detected that. So I didn't have to go through another wizard to configure the database before I got to this screen. So with that in mind, I know that my site is working and I can configure this site. I can go blaze test site and give it a name and give it a, um, uh, username for the, the login, um, if I could capitalize site, and then I'm going to use blaze for that. Let's use their generated password there, uh, or I could just type in password one, since everybody uses that for everything and confirm it's a weak password, give it a, an email and use my personal email and discourage site. That's fine. Whatever. I'm going to be deleting this anyway. So, um, with that in mind, I can click on install WordPress and then that will actually pop that will populate the database with all the tables and then it will stick some uh, initial data into the database as well. Now that that's finished, let's come back over here and go to login and uh, that'll take me to the login page of the admin site or I can just simply go to the root and that will take me to the actual web page itself that is running on Azure App Services inside of a container. So we can see that I used a WordPress image to build this site and then I built the image, pushed it to Docker Hub and then used App Services to deploy that image. Now that this is done, I can come back over here to the Azure portal and I can look at the container settings uh, tab or, or blade uh, for the configuration that I just gave it. Now I selected Docker Compose in the wizard that I used to create this. However, I can also use Kubernetes configuration files or I can just deploy a single container. So if I scroll down here, I can get, I can see the configuration that I passed in the Docker Compose file. And that Docker Compose file has all the settings that I pre-populated this with. And then I can come down here and I can get the, the logs for this particular build. And those can sometimes take a while to pull back, but when they do, they will appear in this text box here. But once I, if I wanted to make a change to this, I, all I would need to do is edit this compose file here, or I could choose and upload a new one to this particular app service. And that would give me everything I need to work with in the uh, app services here for containers. So with this, you can do a lot of different kinds of deployments that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do inside of app services if the particular environment that you're that deploying isn't supported. So if I was using, for instance, like I mentioned earlier, bash scripts uh, that were being served up by Lighty or maybe Perl or something like that to write web apps in, I can use Docker containers to host that. And then I can use a web server of my choice uh, to host that inside of that container as well. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com. And there you can find about services that Wintelect offers, including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at The One Mule and also follow Winelect on Twitter at Winelect Now or at Winelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.